Right, hi there, it's Robert again. And um, what I'm going to do now is, um, I get asked a lot when making a flower arrangements with classes and when teaching classes for something to do that's quick and easy and effective that they can do in one two hour class and that they can then quite happily use and make and as much as they want. And so I'm going to do bamboo. And I tend to do bamboo in a couple of different lengths rather than doing all uniform lengths. Um, so I'm going to show you how to make this bamboo. Um, it's very easy, very quick and very effective and it looks lovely with um, orchids and um, exotic flowers. Right, so the first thing we need to do is to make some green sugar paste. Okay, so I'm going to use some satin line. This comes in a tub and it comes in a plastic bag. Uh, always make sure you reseal it and keep the air out. This is really nice stuff because it's, it smells of marshmallow uh, and it's lovely and pliable and easy to use. It doesn't matter what shade of green you use because bamboo comes in all different shades. Um, so I tend to use the spruce green um, and the more you add, the darker it will go. So I'm just going to mix up a little bit. It's as I said earlier, it's very concentrated stuff. Um, so I'm just going to put some in. And then what I, the preferred method that I use is to stretch it and fold it over um, and to cover in the gel itself so that you're not actually getting it all out. You will get some on your hands but it tends to stain so I always tend to do a folding motion and fold it into the centre um, until you get it starts to get going and then you can just um, mix it in. Use a bit of Trex on your fingers um, and it stops it being sticky. And as, as you can see, it takes quite a bit of time to mix in. Spruce green is the, is the one that we use when we're making rose leaves and it tends to be a general medium green. There's holly green, which is a dark green, and there's other, there's other greens that are much lighter. But spruce green tends to be the one that is used a lot in, in general leaves. Um, I use a lot of it in rose leaves because it, it, it does beautiful rose leaves, it's a lovely colour. So that's just been mixed in to a shade, as you can see it's lighter, but you can add more to make it darker. Okay, so you can make it any shade you want, there's no, there's no set rule on what shade you want to make it. Um, but you are going to need more than this, so I've pre-done some already. Um, Trex softens this down. So um, put some on your hands and knead it. And what we're trying to do is to try to get a ball that has got no creases or we get rid of all the edges and the creases. So it's nice and so it's a nice smooth shape. So most of the creases have gone out of that now. And then roll it into a sausage. And one of the great tools that we use in cake decorating is a cake smoother. Um, and this is great because this will help you to roll it smoother. And it will thin it out at the same time by putting pressure down evenly in the centre. If you do it with your fingers you get the groove marks where your fingers are uh, and it's not even so if you use a, a smoother it makes it a lot easier and it gives you a nice smooth finish. When you're doing legs on models and arms on models and you want them to look exactly the same roll them with a smoother and, and then you've got them all the same width and the same length. As you can see, it's 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 growing in length because I'm I'm, pu I'm putting pressure down on it. So 
So that gives me a nice long sausage of sugar paste to use. What I'm going to use here is an 18 gauge wire. This is the thickest wire that cut the, the coming different gauges from 33 uh, down to 18. The lower the number, the thicker the wire. This is an 18 gauge wire and it's quite bendy and quite strong. Um, and dip it into the glue just to get some glue onto the end to st stop it from coming back out again and take any excess off. And then this is going to be fed in through the end and it's going to be fed in all the way along to the end of the tube. Um, what you don't want to do is to stop it halfway because when you make these grooves in it the end will just snap off. So you can feel it as it's going in with your hands. If you want to roll your tube as well while you're doing it, just in case you think it's coming out of the other side or... The one thing you don't want is for it to come out of the end. You can feel the wire it in and if you lift it up, if, the, if it wasn't in the end, that would just flop over. Um, so I know that the wires, you can see how bendy that little bit on the end is. I know that the wire is coming to about here. Um, and you can feel it inside. And when you're putting it in, you can feel it going in. So re-roll it. This, with the bamboo, you tend to re-roll quite a few times because you're working with it and it's quite soft material to work with. Um, it's nice to re-roll it a few times. Don't worry if you get a little mark on it um, because it can always be used as one, as, the, as one of the gauge lines when we come to put those in. This is a, f a full length wire but it's far too long. This, is, this bit here now is far too long for any display purposes so I'm going to just snip the end off. But this piece that I've snipped off, I'm going to use to put the grooves into the bamboo with. So if I just clear it out of the way. So by using the wire, just rest the wire onto the bamboo and just roll it. You're not going right the way through to the wire, but you're just going to get a nice deep groove in. Do two or three on, but don't do them at equal distances. Do them at varying distances. Bamboo isn't equal all the way along, so it looks better if you do it sort of a wide one and a narrow one. That's the first stage of the bamboo done and as you can see there's just a couple of little marks on it but I'm going to cover those up. This is where I was pushing the wire in and the wire came out at the end but it doesn't matter because bamboo is not as I tell students nothing is perfect in nature. The tool that I'm going to use to make these gauge lines in this piece of bamboo is the veining tool and this is the one that has got a very sharp ridge on the back, a very sharp edge on the back and this is very simple is just to put it into the, we're going in where we put the, the dividers and I'm just drawing a gauge, line, a gauge line up and that one there has covered up that hole that I had with the fingernail and I'm going to put it in and then just draw it out. I'll do that one again and you need to do these around the piece of bamboo at, at different intervals. Don't do them uniform, don't do four and make sure they're opposites. Make it look like not nice and sort of um, uneven. And what I tend to do is do all the ones one way and then turn the whole piece of bamboo over and do the ones the other way. Um, it saves being caggy handed and trying to go at it with your wrong hand. So whether you're left handed or right handed, you start whichever way you want. Um, do not, try not to line them up. So I'm gonna go in there. So 
So you can see I'm just rolling it towards me. I'm just putting in some gauge lines, some small ones, some large ones. That now needs to be left to dry. Um, you can't do anything with this until it's bone dry. So what I tend to do is I, I teach this at the start of a class, get them to put it away in the toolbox and then leave it for next week. And then the next class we can do all the decorating on it. So I've done one already that is the same, but it's all it is, it's that it's dried. So now what we're going to do is we're going to, we're going to use some paint and we're going to use some dust and some colour and colour it up. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is to make a little bit of green paint that we're going to put into these grooves. And you need a very fine brush for this. And I'm using a very fine, very fine paintbrush. A lot of people use specially bought palettes. I just use the lid and a little bit of vodka. The reason we use vodka is that it evaporates and it will evaporate off and leave just the paint residue and you'll find that a lot of in a lot of sugar craft when we're using making a paint it's used with vodka and a little bit of the colour. So I'm just mixing a little bit of vodka into that. So I've got some nice green on the, and this is, again, I'm using the spruce green color, the same color. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna paint inside this groove. I'm just gonna go around and just, and it gives depth to that groove. And I'm gonna do each one of them So I'm not coming outside of it, I'm just literally just doing it into the groove. That's why I'm using a very fine paintbrush. So that's just, it's, it's show, it makes it show up the divisions more. Um, that will take a couple of minutes to dry. Uh, the vodka will evaporate off and it will, the, the paint will be left on it and it'll be ready to, we can dust it then. It just needs a couple of minutes just, just to dry. Right, so now this has just started to dry a little bit. It's still a little bit damp, but that we can use that to our advantage. So you need a bit of tissue and some foliage green dust which I'm just going to put a little bit onto the tissue. These dusts are quite cheap and they go a long way. This, I think I've had this one on the go for about two years and it's only half done. So it lasts, it's worth its, it's, worth its money. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a paintbrush, a flat paintbrush, and use, just build up some dust onto the brush. And then I'm going to do an an outward motion from the groove and I'm going to bring some colour so go all the way around as you're putting the dust on you're easing it out as you're working your way up so it thins out so we're not looking for a block colour so again as I did with the grooves do it all the one way and then turn it over and do the same, but in the opposite, the opposite direction. Um, I'm left-handed, so I find it easier to work like this, rather than swapping hands and, and making a mess of it. So we're just dusting this this green out 
from that line that we've painted in. Get on this one. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put a little bit of green just on the ends of the bamboo. Turning it over and putting a little bit of green on the other end. <laughs> Blow off any excess and Then we can move on to the final stage of this. And what we need to do now is to make it shiny. So I'm going to use some bridal white, bridal satin white, and the green again. But I'm going to use the residue of the green that I've got left on my, t on my, my bit of towel and add white to it. Bridal satin is what's used on a lot of wedding flowers. Um, so I'm just going to just tip a little bit of this on top of the green that I've already used rather than wasting the green um, and just mix it together so we've got a very pale green but it's also it's made with a luster so it's quite shiny so tap off the excess and with the bamboo we're just going to go over the whole thing And all the colours that we put on underneath will show through the luster. So just check that you've got the luster all the way around and do the tops, make sure the tops and the bottom are both done and then that's the bamboo finished.